Hello there, ladies and gents. Um, sorry to stifle your fantastic debate with um, uh, my interjection here. Um, my name is Stuart Elford. I'm the Chief Executive of Devon and Plymouth Chamber of Commerce. Don't ask why we've got that weird name. Um, and I'm also Chair of British Chambers of Commerce Southwest, which is the accredited county chambers of Cornwall, Devon, Dorset, Somerset and Business West. And I also chair B, uh, the B5 in the Southwest, although with a sort of B4 and a half, because one's not playing at the moment, but I'll come, come back to that another time. Um, so uh, the Devon and Plymouth Chamber has been designated by the uh, Department for Education as the employer representative body to deliver a local skills improvement plan for the heart of the Southwest area. That's a massive mouthful to get out. So we're the ERB that's delivering the L SIP for the LEP in the HOSW. Anyway, you know, it's complicated. But um, this is what um, Lawrence and others have alluded to, the, the local skills improvement plan, what it is. And what it is, is it's um, government saying that the voice of the employer must be front and centre in future skills planning, which actually, if you think about it, makes total sense. And that's not to say that colleges and training providers haven't been doing that. They've been doing a lot of really good work. Um, but also I think a lot of the time that's quite by its very nature with some of the larger employers and the LSIP says you must include all employers, all sectors and look at exactly the sort of thing that this brilliant skills summit is looking at. So I hope we can steal all the um, answers that come out of this because it is re really exactly the sort of questions uh, we'll be asking. And the point about this was whilst you would never want to take away um, the choice of students to study what they want to study, that is disingenuous to them to put them through something that when they come out the other end, there aren't any jobs. And that's also disingenuous to employers who can't get the people they want to do the jobs they need. Um, and the example we give about this, so we don't offend anyone, is um, llama farmers. So llama farming may be a very, very interesting course to do. It may be very profitable for the college to put on, but we don't have that many llama farms in the Southwest. So churning out thousands of llama farmers is not gonna be what it's all about. So um, what is the LSIP going to do? As the uh, employer representative body, the colleges, um, we, who I'm sure would do it anyway, but they have a statutory duty to work with us to look at this. Um, we will work with all the other ERBs, um, and there's a lot of them. So, you know, FSB, CBI, IOD, MAKE, SWEOT, you name them, we will work with them. Sorry, Southwest <coughs> Business Council, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, there's a lot of us about. Um, so we will work with all of those and, and lots of lots of employers. Um, the program actually runs for about three years, but the main thrust of it is between now and about March next year, we'll be on a massive intelligence gathering exercise where we'll be drawing in um, things that we already know from the Skills Action Plan from the LEP, the SAP, uh, from information the colleges have, training providers have, larger employers have, but we'll also be running a bunch of um, engagement events, uh, surveys, one-to-one um, -one interviews, and basically doing everything we can to draw in all this intelligence then there'll be a two month period of actually writing the plan. Then there'll be about um, a month's worth of arguing with DFE about the plan and judging by the budget meeting I had with them recently, there'll be a lot of arguments about that. Um, and then once the plan has been agreed, there's a period of monitoring over the next two years about how the plan is rolled out. But what it should do is end up putting the future skills that are required by employers front and centre in further education and how it's delivered so that you as employers, those of us in the room who are employers, will get the people they want trained in the things they want. Um, so that, I think, just about leads me to the question. Something flashed across my mind I should have said. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, um, so the question is, what are the future skills that are required? What are we going to need? Over to you. Thank you. 